Hi, I'm Rachel Macko, native plant grower here at Wild Ridge Plants. We're a native plant nursery located in Warren County, New Jersey, and we grow wildflowers, trees, shrubs, and graminoids that are native to our area. We collect all the seeds ourselves, so therefore our plants are all local ecotaped. So that means that they're adapted to the conditions of our region. These plants grow up and down the East Coast and into the Midwest. Today, I'm doing a seed sowing project. It's January, and I'm actually almost done sowing all the seeds for the year. Now, why is that? Why have I begun so early as opposed to waiting for spring conditions, which are favorable for germination, right? Well, native seeds need something called stratification. And stratification is essentially this. It's mimicking the conditions that seeds would experience in the wild without the human hand. So what I mean by that is by sowing the seeds now, they're experiencing winter conditions and then spring conditions. And that's the key to unlocking the chemical compounds in seeds that prevent them from germinating too early. Now, what seeds need is about 90 days of cold, moist, shifting then into about 90 days of warm, moist conditions. Again, winter and then spring. That's not the case for all native seeds. There are exceptions, there's always are, and that includes grasses and then sometimes our fleshy fruited seeds, and they require something slightly different. We're gonna sow two different seeds today. We're going to sow some that are tiny seeds that require light to germinate, and then we're gonna sow some seeds that are a little bit larger that don't necessarily require light to germinate. Let's get started. If you've purchased your seeds or you're getting seeds as a part of this workshop, your seeds have already been cleaned. Everything unnecessary to their germination has been removed. Everything that might actually carry those seeds on wind or stuck to animals fur has been removed. So you're just getting pure seed. I've already cleaned these seeds using a variety of strategies. Here they are. This is a milkweed seed, specifically common milkweed, Asclepius syriaca. And after cleaning them, I've stored them dry and in cool, dry conditions. A paper bag or an envelope is perfect. Make sure you always label everything that you do. So what we're going to do is get started. I've already filled these trays and I'm going to just gently Press the soil, nice and easy. Don't need to go too crazy on the soil. There we go. Just gently tamping it down. What you're doing is getting a nice surface ready to receive the seeds. You can sow in a variety of plug trays. Here we've got a deep 50 plug tray I'll show you some other plug trays in just a moment. And what I'm doing is simply putting about two or three seeds per cell, just like that. Then I'm tipping them down once more. and then gently applying grit. This is a clay grit. It's a non-clumping clay, clay grit that's used for conditioning things like ball fields. Essentially, it looks a lot like kitty litter, and you can use kitty litter in this case. It just has to be the non-clumping kind. As a part of this workshop, you'll be using sand, which is also an appropriate material to cover your seeds. They just need to be lightly covered you might, in fact, still see your seeds popping up from beneath the grit or sand, and that's okay. Just a light cover. They don't need to be buried. Now, what we need to do, very important, label your seeds. I have pre-printed labels here as a part of the nursery, so I can simply do this. 
or i can take a blank label and use believe it or not pencil pencil will not wear off in the weather it will stay despite whatever the climate throws at us things like indelible marker actually don't weather rain and ice and snow as well as pencil does you can also try a grease pencil but pencil is nice and sharp and very precise if you don't have labels you can also use masking tape and again write with pencil not pen or indelible marker basically we're all set we're going to put this to the side and then we're going to do another type of seed a little seed very tiny Here's our next plug tray, all prepared. Again, I'm gonna gently firm this soil. Don't need to go too hard, nice and easy. While we're taking a little break here, I'm gonna show you a couple different kinds of plug trays. We've got this one very shallow a lot of openings here a lot of what we call cells this is really great for annual veggie growers in fact i think this came from one of our friends who does annual vegetables the reason being that it's not as great for natives is because you can see how shallow and small each cell is that means you really need to be cautious about watering it needs to be kept moist so we tend to not use those. Another option, which is probably what you're using for this workshop, is this. It's also quite a tall container, and then there's fewer. These accommodate nice deep roots and will be great for transplanting later in the spring. So here we go. Our next seed is actually quite tiny. Lobelia syphilitica, or great blue lobelia, which is related to cardinal flower, lobelia cardinalis. The seeds are actually quite, quite tiny, even tinier than the tip of my pencil, I'd say. So this, you want to go nice and easy with sowing your seeds. Just sprinkle a little bit. You may want to, in fact, if you have limited number of seeds, divide your seeds up before beginning to sow. And it's quite amazing, even though the seeds are quite tiny, wildlife do utilize them. Every winter I marvel at the slate colored juncos who come and harvest the tiny seeds of the different pycnanthemum or mountain mint species. You'll notice once again, I am firming this soil nice and easy. And there'll be no need for top dressing of any kind because these seeds do need light to germinate. Like I said, all seeds are unique, all seeds are different. Once again, I've got my pre-printed label. I'm gonna pop that right in there. You can take your pencil and your masking tape or your label and make sure you mark that. What you're going to write down is the species name, the date that you've sown it. So that way you don't get mixed up if you have trays that are left over from previous years, you know exactly when you sowed them. Your next step is to take your trays with the sown seeds and store them in a place that is exposed to the elements. Again, we're stratifying these seeds they need to experience winter moving into spring. It's not just the temperatures, it is that moisture because the seeds remaining moist are, are know that they experiencing the conditions that are ideal for their germination. An ideal place to put them is one that is protected from pets and rodents. Rodents sometimes do eat seeds, especially the larger ones. These that we've sown today, the kernel flower, grape lobelia, the milkweed seeds, 
tend to not be bothered by rodents, but still, you never know. So a place that is covered on the bottom with some kind of mesh and on the top as well. You can leave these covered in a plastic bag in a place like a garage or a shed, which are not heated. You'll have to periodically check for two things, moisture. You want not, a, not too much or not too little. So periodically you may need to water your seeds gently with either a spritz bottle or something very gentle. You don't want to flood the seeds out. And again, ideally, if you can, leave them outdoors, just protected. Sometime in spring, May, June, possibly even later, your seeds will germinate. All plants are different. So watch them, especially once it begins warming. If you have stored your seeds in plastic in a garage or shed, you're going to need to check them. If they're outside, check them as well, but you'll need to be less on top of them. When they germinate, of course, they'll be quite small, very exciting, and they'll need periodic watering, especially if the spring tends to be dry, and our springs have experienced a lot of dryness in the past several years, so just be careful of them. They'll be ready to transplant when you see a few different aspects of them become robust. One thing you'll notice is if you look underneath, you'll see vibrant roots coming out of the bottom. You'll also see vibrant top growth. You may see plants about four to six inches tall, and at that point, they may be ideal to transplant. You'll also want to check the stems. Are they robust, resilient, strong? Can they withstand things like wind and rain and planting in the conditions of your particular garden? Thanks for joining us for this native seed sowing workshop. I'm Rachel from Wild Ridge Plants, and this video is brought to you by the Sourland Conservancy.